Can you talk about what is the idea of secession? What are the odds that it might happen? What does it mean for the United States uh, in some way for different states to secede? Sure. America has been one country with several cultures since the beginning. Um, there's absolutely no reason for someone, this goes back to the anarchist idea, if you despise Donald Trump, which is your prerogative, if you think Joe Biden is a clown, which is your prerogative, there's absolutely no reason for you to be governed by someone you disapprove of. This is an incoherent, nonsensical concept. The only reason we even take it as a hypothesis is that we're trained to the contrary since kindergarten. Um, a secession, I don't know what, along what lines, but in, increasingly it's becoming harder and harder for people to have conversations. I think social media, and this is something people despise social media for, I think this is something that social media has done well, which I'm advocating for, is it tends to kind of run through ideas through like an evolutionary process and drive them to the logical conclusion. Uh, so it's very hard to be a moderate online because there's gonna be people it, you know, pushing through your ideas through several cycles, and then you're gonna end up at some kind of more pure, or if you wanna dislike it, extreme perspective. Having these different pockets, it's not really governable because people fundamentally have different worldviews. So I don't know what secession would look like. I think the number is really uh, have ex increasing an exponential rate. Um, I do not the think- The number of supporters. Uh, supporters. Uh, I think the claim that this can only be accomplished through violence is false. It's a lie. Uh, just like any divorce doesn't have to involve beating your ex-husband or ex-wife. So, and I, I, I'm i very much looking forward to this becoming a uh, reality far quicker than I ever expected. Well, do you think there's a value of- um competing worldviews being forced to be in the same yes, space. Yes, within a context. So we can agree if group one thinks A, B, and C are the fundamental aspects of their worldview and argue within that, and world group two thinks D, E, and F and argue within that, so you're gonna have a lot of argument within those space. But if there's fundamental differences in worldview, there's no reason to be especially when each views the other as completely incoherent and unreasonable. Do you think there's a line of fundamentally different worldviews that uh, along which a secession will happen in the United States? Like, is there something that emerges to you as a set of ideas that are like, um, what do you call that? Like you can't come to, uh, you can't come to an agreement over. I, yeah, I think this is already happening. Like with the masks, um, I think there's just two fundamental perspective and each one thinks the other is insane and also deadly and destructive. And I don't see how there's any um, discourse on this topic. So on the left, masks. I wouldn't say it's left versus right. I think it's people who are pro risk versus people who are risk averse. Yeah, so risk averse. And then there's like a, uh, a hope for the comfort of the sort of uh, centralized right. science s uh, giving the, the truth and then everybody must follow the truth right. of uh, the proper way to behave. And then there's uh, on the other side, a distrust of any kind of centralized institutions of anybody who might uh, use uh, like control to try to gain greater and greater power and masks are a symbol of that. And Even if masks are or are not a, Vacatious, yeah. a, 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 a yeah, effective way of uh, of stopping the virus, which is really unfortunate to me as a from a perspective. I happen to be on a survey paper about masks. Like people don't seem to care about the data or the so on. Correct. This this is this has become just a nice point on which to then highlight the difference between uh, the two the two sides. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, I. <laughs> It, it sounds kind of on the face, kind of ridiculous that the secession would occur over masks. It wouldn't, I, but I'm saying but, this yeah. is an example of something where there's a clean break. Yes. Um, and and risk averse versus, you know, uh, someone who's risk seeking, these are just two fundamentally different perspectives. Do you want to have an NHS or do you have a, one of a market-based healthcare system? I, you can make very valid arguments for both. There's no reason for everyone to be under one. But do you, you think that's not something that's, that you think that's irreconcilable, if that's the word. Yeah. Uh, that 
that's not in the space of ideas that you can have in the same room together and they fight at each other and ultimately make progress. Like they, that secession is the more effective way to proceed forward. Yes. Well, I, I, <laughs> uh, do you see a possible world where no is the answer? <laughs> Meaning, uh, I know you say yes, because you kind of lean on the side of freedom and anar anarchism. Yes. Like you make, you wanna make, let me make an argument in terms of divorce, which is in your worldview or your intuition is you want to make secession as frictionless as possible. Like of course. A, along all lines, not just like states or whatever, just like Absolutely. you want to choose, you want to be free. Yeah, and peaceful. But let me make my authoritarian uh, Russian- Okay, Papa Stalin. Papa Stalin argument in terms of relationships, like when, shit goes wrong in a relationship. Watch your language. <laughs> okay, there's only a place for one Stalin at this table, <laughs> okay? Okay, I'll get you, to be you, Lenin. You, no, <laughs> you get to be like Merkel as our previous okay. discussion with yeah. Putin, okay? Don't let me unleash the hounds. Uh, it, you know, you wanna work through some of the troubles before you get divorced. Like you wanna do the work in relationships sometimes. Like it goes up and down. It's like, been 200 plus years. It's uh, it's done. But in the, listen, okay, so it's not a one night stand, but you know. Look uh, at Trump, this, I don't see the middle ground. He's either a complete calamity buffoon or he's been the first great president we've had in like many, many years. So you think that there's something different now than it was 20 years ago? Yes, social media and access to information. And the division will only increase, you think? Oh yes. So Trump is not an accident of history. So it's they thought Trump was the river, but he was the dam. Trump was the dam. They thought he was the river. So in that analogy, Trump being gone makes things worse. Yes, for their perspective, because now things are really gonna hit the fan. So what are the odds of secession? I don't know. And my desperate hope is that it's peaceful. But so I think the, the number of people who are becoming very comfortable with the violence is making me very unsettled. Well, I see words as violence and your Twitter. <laughs> it's like Hiroshima <laughs> times a million. Uh, sometimes I curl up in the corner crying after I check your Twitter feed. So, <laughs> but you, in, uh, in all seriousness, you, um, you think it's possible to do nonviolent secession? It's a good Czechoslovakia. Look at Brexit. Brexit was the secession. Right. Right, so you can have- uh... Civil war did not need to be fought. That would have been a, a nonviolent secession. And and if you worry about slavery, you could have bought off all the slaves, import them to the North. It still would have been cheaper and less loss of life and probably be better for race relations. Yeah, I don't know enough history to to wonder about like how the civil war could have been avoided. Well, that's how. Is, uh well, conversation so like no no if they want to secede say look here's what we're going to do we're going to let you secede but you have to end up slave you have to end slavery they seceded because of slavery here's the other thing there's like this some circles of conservatism have this myth that oh it wasn't about slavery it's about states rights well if you go back every state when they seceded released a press release and they said explicitly we're doing this because of slavery so that is an abomination that needs to be taken care of but the way to, the other countries have you know, ended slavery peacefully. One of the ways to do it is pay them by all, and we end up doing this after the war. I think the South people got um, reparations, the slave owners, it was just insane. Bring them North, you wanna go to Canada, whatever, and you agree and that's our peace treaty. Because the people who died weren't the slave owners, it was white trash. And it, it was, that's who always, and I hate that that's the term, I can't think of a better one, but that's who always ends up fighting these wars often, disproportionately. It's poor people and uneducated people. Yeah. I mean, and I don't, I don't, I did not regard them as cannon fodder. I think it's horrible. So what would it look like? There would be two founding documents? Yeah, they had their, they had their constitution. Actually, I don't know the history of that. Yeah, they had the, a constitution, but it was much more decentralized. 